In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, from his temple he heard my voice.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people, that we who stuff justly suffer the consequence of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the Sunday called Septuagesima is written in the second book of Moses known as Exodus chapter 17. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Zin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Walk on ahead of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. The second lesson is written in St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapters 9 and 10. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered over the desert. This is the word of the Lord. Let your ears be attentive 
to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. Words of Jesus. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About the third hour, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same thing. About the eleventh hour, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about the eleventh hour came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, Friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you.
Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner. As Jesus tells it, the kingdom of heaven is not a place or a thing, but a person, a man. And, and how this man relates to his vineyard and those who work in it. At the end of the day, this man on whom the kingdom of heaven is, is built, is based, says this, I want to give. Who would ever grumble or complain about that? Who would ever grumble or object to or, or disbelieve a God who says at the end of the day, I want to give? Except for the fact that we live in a messed up world in which the inhabitants of this world are so twisted and so perverted and so turned in on themselves that they turn their eyes off of the God who wants nothing more than to give to them richly. And instead, their eyes are focused on, on everyone else around them. They turn to see what everyone else has or what everyone else is doing. That is, they forget what they have been given and they feel themselves entitled to not what he has promised, but whatever everyone else mostly has, even though they themselves have more than most. And regardless of how we have treated others, we insist that others treat us better, calling it only fair. And yet never say a word when, when we have failed others or hurt others. And then at the end of the day, those same people have the audacity to complain and to grumble that God would make us equal to others, to those who have labored less, who have loved less, who have sinned more. While we, we say, we have labored and we have struggled and sacrificed and suffered. It is true, the owner of the vineyard does give the same to everyone. He gives the same to, to the one who hardly gets his hands dirty, the one who never even breaks a sweat, as to the one who has worked since before dawn, the one who has burden, borne the burden of the day, worked through the hardest and the hottest part of the day. At the end of the day, this landowner doesn't get what he pays for. They are not paid according to their work. Why? Because we have a crazy boss. It, it makes no sense at all. If you did this in any business, you wouldn't be in business for long, and the world would call you a fool. Indeed, the world does call him a fool. Why? Because he only wants to give by grace, as a gift. And thanks be to God. Because if he were not so foolish with his gifts, we would all be lost. Because the truth is that there's not a single one of us who has ever really put in a full day's work. Not in his vineyard not in his kingdom, in the things, in the work that he has given us to do. We act like we have, we talk like we have, and we feel like we're justified because of the fact that we do happen to know some who have worked less, who have done worse. But in reality, while, while we were supposed to be working, doing our duty, what has been asked of us, what were we doing instead? I don't know probably checking our phones, seeing to see if there's something that we're going to miss out on if we don't do that, looking and distracted by whatever titillates and excites. Meanwhile, 
ignoring the neighbors around us. Or perhaps we were just napping in the vineyard, too lazy to watch or to pray. Or, which is worse, moonlighting for the enemy, sowing thorns and thistles in his vineyard, doing the opposite of the work we are called to do. Or perhaps just loafing in the marketplace. Blaming our inactivity on someone else because no one has hired us, they said. In other words, the ones in Jesus' parable that are hired at the end of the day, that's us. Not because we happen to come late in time, but for the simple fact that we do not deserve what the Master wishes to give. If the Master, our Lord God, were not like this, we would all be lost. We would get nothing. Or, or rather, we would get simply what was coming to us. To those who expect to be paid on the basis of our merit, on the basis of our work, we would hear what, what sounds good, but is really dreadful. For the master to say, take your pay and go. You get what's coming to you. Depart from me. Why should you expect to receive anything from this crazy boss? Well, it turns out he's not really crazy, not like that. But he is crazy about you. He loves you. And therefore, he says, I want to give. In his love, but with a clear purpose and will, he chooses to give. Give what? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Which is not some kind of act, random act of kindness or generosity that, that at the, at a, on a whim, at the end of the day, God chooses to overlook our complete unworthiness and complete incompetence and wants to give entirely regardless of any effort or merit on our part. No. This was his plan. From the start, from the very beginning of the day. Notice, even before Israel left Egypt, it was God's plan to provide for them food and water and to accompany them in the wilderness. The reason St. Paul in our epistle calls the rock which accompanied them, he calls that rock Christ, because whenever God acts in this way, in his grace, giving for free, that is the way he acts and works through his son. See, this is the way God acts with you, the way God works. When Jesus Christ takes upon himself what really belongs to you, the true wages your sin deserved. And there God speaks and he deals harshly with his son and deals kindly with you. It's the way he works when, when the water and the blood flow out of the body of his dead son who had borne the burden of your sins and the heat of hell. And from this rock, as St. Paul calls it, he washes you in holy baptism. And he gives you to drink in the Holy Supper. It is the way he works, even now, when he comes and he forgives you your sins. Of course, with, with such a boss, with such a God, one might well ask, well, why work? I mean, if you don't get paid for the actual work that you do, why keep doing it? 
Let me ask you this. What do you suppose, the workers in the vineyard, in our parable today, what do you suppose they will do tomorrow? The next day. Those who work all day and expect to be paid accordingly, they can work for anyone. They can work anywhere. They can get a job and exact, get exactly the same thing as they got this day. They'll, they'll get what's coming to them, and likely they will only work so hard. But those who have received from the Master's generosity, will they not do everything in their power to work in this man's vineyard tomorrow? And why? Is it because they expect to be paid more than a day's wage, to be paid more than they deserve? No. Will they loaf around in the morning? Will they sleep until noon and expect to be treated the same? I doubt it. But they will work for this man because they have known him for his generosity. Because he wants to give and they love him. They believe in him to do what is right and good. And they will continue to believe that as many days as they work. They will continue to believe that even when the work days are long and hard. They will not begrudge those who might be hired later than them. Those that seem to be given more. They will work. Christians work. They do good. They serve others, not for wages or reward, not for appreciation or fulfillment, not for a living or to earn eternal life. But because our master who has called us has given us this work to do and we trust in him to make things right. Our works earn nothing, only serve our neighbor. So then let us keep running our race, keep fighting our fight, keep working in our vineyard, in the very particular place to which our master has called us. Let us keep, most importantly, let us keep receiving what our dear Lord wishes to give. That we might work another day, another day under his grace and generosity. Until the night comes when no one can work. Until the end of the day comes and we prepare to line up to stand before the master and for all of our work to be shown. As we approach the end, may we pray as the ancient Compline bedtime prayers teach us to pray. O oh Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing the Christian faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father,
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the Holy Church, that all who have been called into the vineyard of the Lord would recognize their unworthiness for such a gracious gift, rejoice in the salvation they have in Christ, and remain steadfast in the word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all pastors in Christ, that they would gladly preach the saving gospel to all, not counting the cost, and not for their own glory or the praise of men, but for Christ's glory alone. For all other church workers, that they, all they do would be in service to this same saving gospel. And for an increase in these vocations, that the Lord of the harvest would use his laborers as his blessed instruments in bringing sinners into the vineyard of his redemption and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our congregation, that we would love one another as Christ has loved us. Give generously to support the ministry here and abroad. Pray for our enemies. Put away all earthly grumbling and bask in the gracious provisions our Lord lavishly bestows on us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the nations of the world, that justice, peace, and the common good of all would be the goal of all those in and under authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all those suffering or recovering from illness, for those who are sad and sorrowful, for those suffering from broken relationships, or financial distress, for those to whom death draws near, and for those who are grieving that Christ would be their health in sickness, their joy in sorrow, and their life in death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who come to the table of the Lord this day, that they would receive the very body and blood of Jesus in repentance and faith, to their abundant blessing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and enjoy heavenly bliss, let us give thanks and praise that we may be brought to share with them the feast of joy that never ends in the eternal vineyard of our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. And we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. 
By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood, and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord, according to his institution, we, your servants, celebrate here before your divine majesty. With these, your holy gifts, the commemoration your Son has willed us to make. Remembering his blessed passion, mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension, we give you most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits he has secured for us. And we humbly ask you to grant that by his merits and death, and through faith in his blood, we in your whole church may receive forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of his passion. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Just a quick reminder, uh, this afternoon, Pastor Harold will be installed at Christ Lutheran in Marshall, uh, which means that next Sunday, uh, we'll be able to go back to our regular schedule here. We'll have uh, the Bible class starting at 9 o'clock, uh, again, next Sunday after whatever it's been, 16 months. Um, thank you for your patience during this uh, time. I've been kind of split um, in two places, but... Also next Sunday, uh, we'll be ha having our fourth annual hymn festival in the afternoon. We have uh, musicians coming from quite a, a ways away, organists, uh, other, well, we'll have organ, brass, violin, flute, um, but the, the most important instrument in, in the hymn festival is, is your voice, um, so we need that there. Um, That's what we're doing it for, is so that we can sing. So hopefully you'll be able to join us. Um, also, even though the hymn festival is in the afternoon, we will still have uh, the potluck. There'll be a lot of activity, rehearsing and things like that uh, next Sunday after church. Um, so we'll have that potluck meal after church in the morning, and then hymn festival at 4 o'clock, and then a meal following the hymn festival as well. God be with you. Mm -hmm. 